not to be overlooked. The Mets shouting up the lefty reliever Antonio Bastardo, his resume presented by Geico. He's 30 years old, pitched six seasons with the Phillies, then spent last year with the Pirates. Earlier today, I asked Antonio what he throws. I got a lot of confidence in my fastball. I think uh, most of the people know that. And I use my slider for strikeout and the change to get out from some situation. What about your role with the Mets? Have you been given any sort of clarity as to what your role is going to be in that bullpen? Not, not yet, not yet, because it's still early, you know, and I think so the thing is here has helped the team get to pass that bridge from the 7 to through the 8 and get to the ninth spot to get to Familia. You mentioned Jerry's Familia. I know you've got a relationship with Jerry's. Fill us in on that where it started and a little bit of the background there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We we we. I met him uh, in Dominican Republic. Uh, we we play in the same team and winnable time. And I I think he listen everything that I say to him, and I think uh, that helped him a lot to be successful and take the role that I mentioned him. So you've had a lot of success in your career against some pretty good hitters, guys like Hayward and uh, Freeman and Harper down in Washington. What does it say about you? and your makeup that you face these guys and do so uh, relatively successfully? You know, those guys, you know you have to be careful with those guys. You cannot live in the, anything in the, in the, in the zone where, where they can hit the ball well, well. So my key with those guys is trying to attack them and show them what, what they want to see, but are not in the spot where, where they can hit it. So Freddie Freeman is hitless in his career against Antonio Bastardo. Bryce Harper just two for a dozen and Jason Hayward two for 19. And none of the three have gone yard off of him as Andy Martino and Anthony DeComo rejoin us again right now. And Andy, you covered Antonio when he uh, was uh, in Philadelphia. You yep. were the beat writer down there in Philly. What sort of impressions do you have of him? He walked in in 2009 to make a spot start, his major league debut. And he walked in with big headphones on, with a strut. And I remember the old relievers uh, were like, who is this guy? You know, they thought he was arrogant. And then he came out and he didn't have a lot of hype. And he came out throwing this blazing fastball, a lot of confidence. And what his scout said about him today was that he outperforms his stuff, meaning his confidence confidence is what helps him. You saw that confidence and evidence when he uh, said he created Juris Familia. So still a very <laughs> confident uh, young man. And that's why it's a good signing for the Mets. It works. Familia, great closer. That's and right. I'm the reason why. Exactly. Now, one of the things that makes Bastardo so attractive is that, yes, he's tough on lefties, but also pretty good against righties. They hit just 210 off him last season, 2015. So how much, Anthony, is he going to face righties this upcoming season? Oh, it's going to be quite a bit, Gary. And, and they signed Jerry Blevins earlier this offseason. That is a lefty one-out guy. He's going to face lefties and pretty much no one else. That's not going to be the case with the starter. This guy's going to come in. He's going to pitch a lot of eighth, eighth innings for the Mets. Addison Reed's going to be there, too, and they're paying Addison Reed a lot of money. But Bastardo's going to be one of those guys in the eighth, and he's going to pitch a lot of full innings if it's clean, if they have a little bit of a lead, two, three runs. He's not going to go hit the bench just because a right-handed hitter is coming up. This guy's got a great fastball. It plays against both lefties and righties. You can see that in his splits over the years. So uh, it's not a lefty specialist by any means. This guy's a good pitcher. And he take us through his strengths and his weaknesses. Yeah, he's a, he's a pretty conventional lefty reliever in this sense. He's a fastball slider guy. Not great stuff, as I just just said that the knack is that he outperforms his stuff, very confident, good presence on the mound. The weakness would be that when he gets, when he is overworked a little bit, when he gets a little fatigued, he can really struggle with his command, which obviously a manager doesn't want in his reliever. But this is a good pickup for the Mets. They needed that setup guy, and this is a guy that can rely on despite the occasional command issues. Yeah, occasional. I would say even go further than that. I think it's a little more than occasional. And he's been effectively wild throughout his career. He walks a lot of guys, more than four per nine innings, which isn't great. But the fastball is really good. And I'd say he's more of a fastball pitcher at this point than a fastball slider even. He does throw the slider as an out pitch, but that's about it. It's a little bit more loopy. It's a little bit more slurvy. So I'm interested to see actually what Dan Worthen, who teaches all these guys that sharp, hard slider, what yep. he does with Bastardo. If he tries to get him to stop throwing that more 12-6 slider and start throwing a harder one earlier in count. That's the Worthen slider. And, and what you mentioned can't get him overtired. Going to be uh, incumbent on Terry 
to use him the right amount and use him properly? Yeah, and that's a tough assignment for any big league manager because you want to win tonight, yes. even though this guy's tired, and that's the whole thing. That's why it helps to have Addison Reed there, too. But he's going to have to ride Bastardo. Let's be clear, because this setup thing was the Mets' biggest weakness. That's why this is an important signing. Bastardo's a very important player, and Terry is going to have to use him quite a bit in that eighth inning.